All right, I have not taught on evolution for a long, long time, actually. Uh, I know that evolution is kind of a more difficult topic for our online viewers, so I'm going to make it as easy as I can in drawing, actually. I'm going to do it as easy as I can in drawing, and then we're going to debunk evolution right here. So let's look at Genesis chapter 1. Okay, I'm going to give these scientific terminologies, but it's going to be in layman's terms, okay? It's going to be in layman's terms. So anyone out there who's a critic, you know, you, you might pound me heavily for using the term inaccurately, but I'm just going to use this for layman people, okay? So the basic concept, though, will be the same. Evolutionists, they believe in the Big Bang because they, th they have a thing called red shift so stars. The idea is this. The idea is, is that when you're on the Earth right here, when you're on the Earth right here, and then you see these stars, and then these stars that are really, really far away, so let's put near here and far. What happens is that within the light spectrum, now I don't know if you knew this, but within a light spectrum, you see these rainbow colors that just come out of a prism, for example, right? So on one side, it's going to be ultraviolet, and then the other side is going to be red, more toward the red side. And then right here is going to be coming like more ultraviolet side. Now here's the thing, is that these stars are actually very red. And the reason why it's going toward the other side of the spectrum, which means it's farther. Okay, so here's the point. The point is this. From one side of the spectrum to the other, the far part is the red. So here's the point. When the star is far, it's going to be red. Okay, that's the gist. When the star is far, it's going to be red. They call this red shifting, okay? Red shifting. That's their evidence for Big Bang Theory, see? So the reason why they believe in the Big Bang Theory or in any evolution, scientists always change their minds, and they always change the terms. So let's just say Big Bang or any original source, let's call it, okay? Where it came from. So they believe this. So see, because these stars are going like this from one location, see? Because if you think about the Big Bang, when it explodes and then it spreads out, right, throughout all the universe. So here's their point. Their point is, is that, so from where we're at, these stars are spreading out. So this pro proves that there was an original point, original point in time somewhere, where there was this Big Bang or something that happened and then it spread out all the other stars and planets and then uh, et cetera, et cetera, see? So that's their proof. And see, because of that distance and that redness, because the farther apart and the red it is, it proves more and more about the Big Bang Theory or evolution from one point in time. But uh, the easy <laughs> debunking is this. It's actually pretty easy. One, here's their problem. And they're, they don't want to, and I know they're not going to believe this part, okay? They say that the stars are moving away from what? Our location. So you know what they just proved right here? They just proved, because where are we at? We're on where? Earth, right? Do they believe that the Earth is the center of the universe? Do evolutionists believe in that? No, they don't believe in that. They believe in heliocentricity. The sun is the center. So see, if they believe that everything started uh, right here where we're in our planet, they're not going to go for that. But not only that, how this falls apart is this, is that the Big Bang, it doesn't just start uh, in our Earth. It's supposed to start somewhere. That's the point, somewhere. It doesn't have to be Earth. But here's the second thing that's a problem. A second problem with this is that how do you not know that the reason why it's turning red, which is true, is because of energy loss? So this is a true scientific statement, or they'll call it scientific theory. This is a true point. If the, if the uh, star loses energy more and more, it becomes red. That's the thing. But here's a third point right here, all right? The third thing is that it's actually even contradictory. How you... 
uh, debate evolutionists what actually re is really helpful against evolutionists. So here's a foundational thing, okay? Because when you argue for carbon-14 dating, radiometric dating, when you argue about fossil strata and fossils that you found, and then certain uh, microevolution changes, what happens is this. Both evolutionists and creationists, they get the prerequisites right. But their conclusions are totally uh, opposite from each other. They come to different conclusions. But how you can, so how you uh, demolish the wrong conclusion is by their prerequisites. But that's very hard to do because both sides are right in the scientific explanation of the prerequisite. So how you, how you debunk that is this, internal contradiction. So basically, you take their evidence, their scientific logic, and then see if their prerequisite works to their conclusion. That's what really works to debunk evolution, actually. So with internal contradiction, remember, they said this. The farther it is, the more red. Uh, the farther it is, it is red, right? Well, guess what? Didn't you know <coughs> that there are stars also that are going towards us as well, that are moving toward us? And guess what? When it's far, it should be red, right? But why is it when it's near, it's red? See that? That's what's going to happen. So the thing is this, is that um, it is true. You're going to see a lot of stars that are turning red, that are red shifting when they're far. But here's the thing. They don't look at every single star and constellation and everything out there. And guess what? There are stars that move toward us as well, and there are stars that are also in the red as well. So inconsistent. But now here's my favorite part. The, my favorite part is this. They're right that it came from, the, uh, from our location and then spread it out the stars. Because why? Here's God on the earth. And when God is on the earth, he spread it out the stars from that location. That's why. Look at Genesis chapter 1. Genesis 1. Isn't it interesting? Look at the days of creation. The days of creation. Look at Genesis chapter 1. And we'll look at verse 10. Verse 10. Where is God doing his creation? What location? And God called the dry land what? Earth. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And what day was that? Genesis 6, uh, excuse me, Genesis 1, 13. And the evening and the morning were the what? Third day. Notice God is creating here on the earth, third day. Here's something interesting. Immediately, immediately what's on the fourth day? Look at this. Verse, four, uh, verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Uh, verse 16, And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Right after he finished his creation on earth over here, he started to create the stars immediately after that. So it shows right here that's not a problem for us. That's not a problem for us. It still doesn't deny God. How do, how do they not know, rather than Big Bang, it's God, see? That's why creationists are known for different conclusions for evolutionists. Evolutionists will see it as Big Bang, but we could see it as God. But when you look at the prerequisites, then you will see that there are things that evolutionists overlook, see? So that's how you can win the argument and be more in the right. But anyway, let's, let's get to our conclusion here. God is the source on the earth that's why it's so interesting. Why did Isaiah 40, look at this, this is really interesting. Go to Isaiah 40, and we'll close it here. Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah 40. Isaiah chapter 40. It's amazing what your Bible does. Verse 22, look how he created the stuff in the universe. Look at verse 22. It is he, that's God, that sitteth upon the circle of the who? Earth. He's right there. And while he's sitting right there, what is he doing? Keep reading. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out. See that? Spreading it out. Stretches out the, cur uh, the heavens as a curtain 
and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Boom! Right there! Your King James Bible may be more scientific than you think. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? So he's right here in this location on the earth, and then he just spreads them all out. Now, your Bible is... If people read their Bible, then we would have saw... We would understand about this star spreading out from our location. We already, already saw that before scientists caught up thousands of years later with red shifting stars. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That's really amazing. Now, here's a side note, okay? Now, this is not um, scientific or doctrine, okay? But here's an interesting thought, interesting thought to ponder. The blood of Jesus Christ, we know where it's located. We know that uh, the blood of Jesus Christ, it's all around the universe, but it gets closer to the edge of heaven. So as the stars reach out more and more and more toward outer space, isn't it interesting why it would be red shifting? <laughs> all right, but hey, you don't have to believe that one, okay? Just food for thought, some, something to think about, all right? But excluding what I just stated about that, about the blood of Jesus and red shifting, the other parts, you can't deny the scientific fact. And not only that, you can't dismiss this conclusion either. It could be this one or it could be this one. But I'll tell you one thing, the Bible was earlier before you came to this conclusion. 2,000 years earlier, more than that. And not only that, you've overlooked the other possibilities, why it's red shifting, too. And not only that, number three, you have an internal contradiction as well, see, internal critique.